These are the five top web developer tools you should try in 2025. First on this list is Cursor AI, the coding IDE that I find myself using more often than VS Code. You see, I started on Cursor because I was going to make a video about it. I started testing it out on different projects, and before I knew it, I was using it for everything I was doing. Since it's a fork of VS Code, it works just like I'm used to with all my extensions and whatnot. However, the core strength is with the Composer option, where it just kind of takes over the IDE and codes out different things you want based on the prompts you give it. For example, I'm building this extension here for Adobe After Effects. And as part of this extension, I need to use Adobe After Effects programming language, which is a bizarre kind of a JavaScript, which is called Extend Script. Now, I don't know how to code in this, so what I've been doing is using the Composer menu for the agent to take over and code out the files where I might not be comfortable with the programming language. And all I really have to do is sort of supervise and approve the changes. Additionally, I can jump on here and use any models that I want. Right now, I'm using the latest Claude 3.7, which is meant to be better at coding. But if I wanted to, I could use DeepSeek or Gemini or obviously ChatGPT with most of the models available. But I can even use my own custom models from things like Olama by getting a little bit crafty and using the API keys here with a base URL. And if you're not aware, VS Code has done a number of updates recently, which add a lot of the features that you find in Cursor. But I'm now so comfortable using Cursor that it's hard for me to swap back. The next tool I'm using is for design and it's Midjourney. Now, specifically, I use Midjourney for a lot of the artwork when I'm building with different websites or applications or even trying to figure out different icons or logos or color sets to use. And I might be a little bit biased because I've generated hundreds, if not thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of different AI artwork on this website. So I have a pretty good understanding of what it can and can't do and what kind of prompts I need to be able to generate those things. But mainly, I like the earlier versions of Midjourney because it could generate entire website designs and give me an idea of inspiration of how I could design them myself. With newer versions, I'm mainly using it for things like background images or logos, simply because it's a lot better at the artwork, but it's been trained on a less website generated content. And so what I'm doing is heading over to the website, selecting filters and selecting version five or under when I'm trying to think of website inspiration and selecting version six or above if I'm trying to go for those backgrounds. Additionally, if you aren't aware, then all of Midjourney is now available through the website. You don't have to jump on a Discord server anymore. Here, you've got more control of how you want the images to work, whether they're in portrait or in landscape, stylization, as well as different modes. And this is really cool. It makes the whole process of generating AI artwork much faster and easier. However, if you're not comfortable using Midjourney because of the paid subscription, you can always use Flux. It's a good alternative and you can set up things like comfy UI in order to use your own Flux model on your own PC without paying a cent. This next AI tool is probably one you've heard of. It's called Bolt.new, and it's one that really helps you bootleg and start up different types of website ideas or app ideas in matter of moments without using even a code ID by simply prompting and working with an AI assistant directly on the site right here. What I think is so smart about Bolt.new is the fact that unlike all the other examples where programming is the primary thing you do and the AI agent is kind of secondary, almost like an extension or a plugin. In this case, the AI agent is the primary item and the coding is a secondary as you're kind of going on the journey with this AI where it's building for you and you're just kind of telling it the direction you want it to go. Since it's running in a browser, it has access to the terminal as well as this virtual directory. And I found out all of this is actually kind of just saved in a local storage, which is pretty cool. And then you can also preview your app. So in this case, I'm running Expo. So I've actually loaded it up on my iPhone and I could preview it. Another really cool thing I like to do is ask it to use a mock-up that I've either hand-drawn or a screenshot that I've put together from Figma and then design a website interface or an app from that screenshot. Here's an example of that right now, and here's the end result. You can see how well it's done in terms of using the framework I want. I want to use the libraries like ShadCN as well as Viton. Then it's put together something I can start customizing and using and even integrating with the YouTube data API in order to build this app and then publish and test it in just a few hours. Next is Zapier. It's an automation tool when I'm trying to automate tasks or build projects. So while I could download an NPM package and code everything out manually, Honestly, this can get exponentially complicated as the scope of a project increases. What I do is use something called zaps, which allow me to create a small workflow of how I want a task to be automatically completed. 
And this allows me to, rather than code it, just visually represent it. And there's a few different ways that I can do that now, including things like having agents or even a canvas that let me visualize this whole process in a much easier fashion. Additionally, I can integrate whatever AI I want. And I know that DeepSeek R1 is pretty popular right now, so I was thinking of utilizing it for a project I'm doing, which is that YouTube one where I can reply to comments much faster and maybe get some recommendations from DeepSeek R1. As you can see, I've made quite a few different types of zaps. And here's one I put together earlier. This one's good because it uses a number of techniques such as utilizing webhooks and AI to generate comments and automations for me for YouTube. For this specific one, I've got this webhook with this URL that my server can ping. This is then passed through ChatGPT and OpenAI, where it's giving me three different replies to a YouTube comment I've received. Then I also have a custom webhook here. This one's custom because it's accessing DeepSeek R1. And for this one, I simply can get it to also do the same thing. I pass through the YouTube comment and then I ask it for three replies as well. This is then sent back to my server, which I can utilize. Then over here, I have cursor in agent mode, putting together a quick UI so we can test this all out. I've got the Zapier webhook URL, as well as my message, which is one comment I got from YouTube. I can select to send that webhook and it gives me an initial response. I'll check for a response from Zapier. It's not quite there yet, but it'll only take a second or two and there it is. I've got my response with different replies I've got from my API. I could format this, but it's just a quick example to show how quickly Zapier can help you build your own web app. Zapier also now has chatbots and agents. I've actually jumped in and created my own chatbot to see how this all works. What I've done is a YouTube Q&A. It's one that has a basic premise where it uses the transcript of one of my videos. In this case, it's my ChatGPT operator one. And from this, I can ask the chatbot different questions, which it can give me as answers based on the video I've created. This would be very useful if I've got one of those one or two hour videos on something like Rust or Python, and someone wants a specific answer, and this will be able to pull that right out. So when it comes to building apps and automating, Zapier is pretty cool. They were also kind enough to sponsor this video. So if you want to check them out, check the link below. The last AI tool that I find myself using constantly is Reloom AI. Now, this is a website that uses AI with a simple prompt to generate a sitemap, a wireframe, and a style guide in just a few minutes. And then you can export them into anything from Figma to React to even a no-code platform in just a single click. Let me show you an example. Let's generate an accounting website sitemap and wireframe. So here it's generating a site from that prompt that I entered in earlier. It includes all the different pages that I might want to have, as well as different sections. Here I can generate different bits of content, and I can also modify and move them about. Once I'm happy with this sitemap, I can use the AI tool now to create the wireframes. And here it's doing so in the background. You can see them generating right now. This is really cool to see. You could sit down with a client and show them this in real time. And in just a few seconds, it's generated out this entire site. I haven't sped up this video. This was all done in real time. Just like a Figma canvas, I can select any of these items and double click to edit them. So for example, here, maybe I wanna remove the word results or ask AI to rewrite the entire thing. Or maybe, for example, I want a video instead of a picture, or I want to regenerate this entire component with something different. And I've got different types of components here I can use for this testimonial section that might match better with this design. So this section is now done. Now let's say I want to style this page. I can head over here to the style guide. And this is where different colors as well as fonts and even UI styling for things like buttons or cards and images are generated for me and then added into the image here. So I can see what that looks like with each choice. I can then create different types of concepts. So let's actually create a couple. I'm gonna select to shuffle and you can see the design being changed over here. Let's create another concept over here. Uh, we'll do, I suppose, a red version and then maybe one more concept over here. And it's just shuffled three different types of concepts. I can select pitch concepts and I could take this to a client, show them example one, example two and example three and kind of work with a client to refine these and get the design perfect before I'm ready to create the site. Now this has already probably saved me days, if not weeks of work that I would normally have to hire a designer to do. And it's one of the reasons I really love this product. Then I can take this concept, head back to wireframes and export them. 
I can export them and download them as a React component. I can export them to Figma, Webflow, or even just download the HTML. Let's try the React export because it's a new feature and I want to see how it works. And here's the code. You can see that it's pretty simple, bare bones, but it's also customizable. I have most of my stuff written in Tailwind CSS, but a few sections here have a little bit more happening, such as the navigation, which has on-click handlers for things like a drop-down menus and mobile responsiveness. 